And let's just go ahead and grab some styles here. Something that's already created, something that's nice and quick. And I'm going to go ahead and save this out. Close this down. I don't really need him anymore. And you'll notice that now when I place this bird directly inside of Premiere Pro, I'm going to hit the plus sign so I can sort of see where he is. And there's my title. Now I can just go ahead and you know play this PSD file back. And you'll notice you know I'm getting very, very good playback. I'll go ahead and bring this up full screen. You know, again, it's a it's a raw Sony uh, XDCam EX file with a Photoshop title playing on that on a laptop, playing very very nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here and say, well, I need to edit that uh, some more. So I'm going to right mouse click and say Edit in Photoshop. And at this point, I might want to click on the bird layer, and you know, add you know some sort of treatment to that. What I like to add maybe is a uh, you know a layer style. Uh, you know, a little bit of a shadow on the bird. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of uh, of an outer glow. And yellow is probably good. And we'll go back to the uh, Annapolis layer and let's go back to uh, gradient overlay. And I can, you know, change the color of the overlay, maybe a little bit brighter yellow, just all the Photoshop tricks that you already know, and save that out. And then as soon as I get back into Premiere Pro, all the appropriate things uh, happen to that file. And I can go ahead and bring, bring that back up full screen and then play that file out. Again, just the flexibility of the Adobe Production Premium just is beautiful to work with. And the other thing that I like to point out about this once I've created this project, and in this case I'm on a Mac, I can save it on the Mac and then open it on the Windows machine and not have to worry with uh, .avi files or .mov files. So uh, just another great benefit of working with Adobe Production Premium and cross-platform workflows. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and log on to Windows and open up this Premiere project. And you'll notice Premiere is at 3.2.0. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my project, which is sitting on my desktop. This is the folder that I copied over from the Macintosh just using a standard USB thumb drive. And the first thing you'll see is all the files will be intact. Uh, the files will play back in real time and it should look exactly like it looked. You'll also notice when I move this over here that I do have my After Effects dynamic link which is showing right here in the project bin. And there is one issue, I'm going to go ahead and bring this up full screen for you, where the font doesn't exactly match. Uh, that is a, a typical problem that happens when you move files cross-platform. Obviously there was a font on the Mac that's not on the PC, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that now and choose a font that's actually on both machines. And here I am inside of After Effects. I'm going to go ahead and change my text a little bit here. And I'll just pick a standard font. Arial Black, kind of boring, but I know it's on both systems. And let's just change the color. That looks good. And I'm going to just quit out of After Effects and save that. And now you'll notice Dynamic Link will update. And all looks good. So a couple things that you'll notice is, you know, the files will, will play back in real time. Um, I have, you know, all the clips in exactly the same order as I would um, expect. And the beauty of editing this way, you can really choose the platform of choice at the time when you need it. So if you're on site and you've got access to a PC or Mac laptop and you just want to start doing a rough cut uh, off of your camera or off of the EX card, it's absolutely no problem. Tapeless workflows were designed to work that way. So with Production Premium being cross-platform, you're able to quickly get out your rough cuts, start your work, maybe you're in the truck on the way back to the studio, that's fine, absolutely no problem. Go ahead and edit directly off of that camera or on the card. 
save that out and then when you get back to the uh, to the studio or to your desktop transfer either the information off of the card uh, you know transfer your project file on a thumb drive and just start editing it's that simple and it's that great I'm gonna jump back over to the Mac and show you that I after I've edited this on the PC and made these changes I can in fact use it back on the Mac okay let's go ahead and launch Premiere Pro and we'll open up that Sony EX project once again. And what we're looking for is to see if the changes had come across from the Windows machine. And here you see I've got the Arial Bold font that came across from the Windows machine. And again, all this simply shows is you can choose the platform that you want to start your edit on and finish editing on a different platform if that's what you want to do. Again, letting the end user decide how they want to edit. You shouldn't be dependent by the machine that you're on. Again, another great example of Adobe's work with Production Premium. Now let's go ahead and end this by talking a few things about exporting, some export options. Uh, you can go to File, Export, Movie, and then go ahead and choose um, a, a codec to use. Uh, in this case, I'm using QuickTime. Um, if I'm on Windows, I could have a couple of other different choices. Uh, and then you just click on your compressor type, and I could choose on this Mac, I could choose Apple ProRes 422, or any of the other settings uh, that I've got in here, depending on what codecs are installed on my machine. Another thing you can do to export that's a little quicker is you can just uh, file export Adobe Media Encoder, and uh, you guys might have worked with this in the past. Blu-ray. When you choose MPEG-2 Blu-ray and you go ahead and make those changes, uh, you just work with the quality setting that's here. Having the quality at, at 4 or 5 is going to be fine. Uh, the key is going to be the uh, the maximum bit rate. You don't want to have the maximum bit rate too high. I suggest just leaving it at the default. Um, and I also find that um, having MPEG-2 on variable bit rate 2 pass or even constant bit rate uh, is a good choice. If you want to just create something very, very fast, variable bitrate one pass um, is pretty good for a draft quality. Um, I still think with MPEG-2, you're going to want to go ahead and, and leave that at uh, variable bitrate two pass for the highest quality or even constant bitrate, which is a great quality as well. It just creates a larger file size. Now, if you happen to have a project that's very large and you're trying to get it, maybe it's a, a, a two, uh, two plus hour video. If you choose H.264, you want to go ahead and make sure you're choosing the correct preset to start with. In our case, we're going to choose HD TV 1080i 2997 and let it set that up. And then we'll come down here and um, for me, I always leave this at variable bitrate single pass or one pass. I don't see a whole lot of difference with H.264 with this encoder and having one pass or two pass, other than it takes a really long time when you do two pass. One pass is fairly long as, as well, but it's twice as fast, of course, as, uh, as two pass. So for H.264, it's perfectly fine to leave that at single pass. And then at this point, you're just going to say OK and go ahead and export that out and that'll be a file that's ready for Encore DVD and you can go ahead and create your Blu-ray disc uh, from Encore. You can also go ahead and export directly to Encore so if you go export export to Encore this will go ahead and bring up the uh, export to Encore dialog box and from here again you can choose either one of these settings that we've just talked about I'll choose MPEG-2 uh, entire sequence. Double check your settings here. Uh, we're going to go ahead on our settings. That'll bring up the same window that you just saw. And I'm going to come over here and choose uh, 1080i high quality. And then go ahead and say OK. The export to Encore also leaves you with two different choices. Uh, direct burn without any menus or author with menus and uh, the advantage here is once you export to Encore you can save the project and continue to work with it you might want to start with no menus save that project and then uh, add menus later so the only difference here is whether or not it thinks you want to bring up the build window first